Welcome to All About TRH, aka All About the Truth. On today's episode, we dive into the alleged reason for Danielle Cabral and her brother's feud, plus talk Real Housewives of New Jersey spoilers and recap the latest Real Housewives of New York episode. Hi, Chantal. Hey, Roxanne. Good morning. Good morning. We both like slept early last night and then we both woke up around, Chantal woke up at 4 a.m. I woke up at 5 a.m. And I hate that. Like I hate that when I sleep early, that happens to me and I just can't have like a full great night's sleep. I feel like if I do sleep early, like not like before nine, but like maybe like 9, 30, 10, I can sleep the whole night. But yesterday was like r- pouring rain in here. And, oh. you know, my mom, she doesn't have the AC on since it's like 65, which I don't blame her, but my window was open. So I like, I woke up from it. Chantel's mom doesn't believe in AC. So they never <laughs> have the AC on. I just, I would have 700 fans lined up because I need to sleep when it's really cold. So I would have 700 fans lined up in my room because I don't know how you sleep. She came from the desert. Oh, I know. Like she came from the desert, you know, um, so <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. why she likes to eat. But for me, I don't know. I just like, I feel like I'm, I'm used to it now since I'm used to her shenanigans with it. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, t- uh, this past weekend, Chantel watched my kids for me while I went to a wedding. And uh, how was that, Chantel? I mean, when I got there, it was like a crazy mess. And it's like they were hyper and they well, were not because just... of me was there. I know. Crazy mess. It's because someone I had my brother actually see my brother. Shout out to my brother. Uh, and his girlfriend actually babysat during the day. Because for us, when we have a wedding, it's an all-day event, an all-day event, especially if you're close with them. So, and then my oldest was walking in the wedding. So I texted Chantel and I was like, I need you to babysit at night. So when she walked in, she texted me. She's like, girl, your house is a shit show right now, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And so. then her kids don't like to sleep. So then I like yeah. I was very stern with them. And I was like, when it, when you see no sun, we're going to bed, okay? <laughs> yeah. And Sloan, my middle child, just learned how to climb out of her crib. She's three and she's still in a crib because I refuse to make a mistake with what I did with my first who comes in my room every day and sleeps in my bed. So I am like about I'm the person who's like, let your kids sleep in a crib until they're five years old. But I said that. And then the next day, she still learned how to get out of her room. And Chantel was laying with my daughter. Because again, my my oldest needs someone to lay with her. It's the worst habit ever. And Chantel literally was, she thought someone was in my house because she didn't realize that Sloan gets out of her crib now. And, and I literally like, heard footsteps. I heard like a bang. I'm like, oh my God, what the heck is that? Yeah. I literally was so scared. And then I just see this little head coming out. I'm like, are you joking? What are you doing? Yeah. Uh, but my my little one, Chantel, she did say, she's like, that one, she's like, that was scary because all she did was put him down and he just passed out. And I was like, yeah, by the third time you really learn how to make sure your kids are, you know, on a schedule versus like what I deal with with my oldest it's not fun, guys. It's cute, but it's not fun. <laughs> yeah. It's really not. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so that was that was funny that Chandel had to do that. She was mom. And it, I think it also made her realize, like, again, she does not want to have kids right away because she's like, holy moly. Yeah, I swear. Well, so, guys, on today's episode, we are actually, we have um, a couple of things that we're going to cover. We got some tea, and we did, we, all of these, all of this is going to be on All About TRH, and a lot of it focuses on Danielle Cabral. Do I say her last name wrong? I don't know. I think you do, though. Cabriel or Cabral? Cabriel. I don't know. I don't know. Again, I pronounce all names wrong, so I'm sorry about that. But we have a lot of tea on Danielle. We have... Um, we are the only people to report when the next filming, the next group event will be. We're going to talk about that, how that's going to look. And then we are covering New York, which again, I'm loving New York. I feel like people are just not loving New York and I love it. So I don't get it. Like when I watch it, I'm actually into it, which is like weird. You know why though? It's because. Okay, again, because, um, yeah, the OGs over here. I watched when I was babysitting, actually, your kids. I watched, like, the first episode of Crappy Lake, which I didn't really love it, by the way. Um, I know you said you, you liked it. I liked it, but I didn't love it because I'm not invested in Luann and Sonia, but everyone is. Well, see, then that's the thing. Like, I love Luann and Sonia, and, and, like, they're just hilarious. Like, I watched it, but I just didn't love, like, the, I don't know. I just didn't love the vibe of the show, but 
like I just remember them on the show of New York and it was just such it was so different and that and that's that's okay it can be different but then I don't know how to explain it it's like there's no depth to there's depth to these girls but then there's not I, don't, I just yeah. it's so hard for me to under to like to, to explain but again, what I'm it's feeling you liked the OGs and like and, and not that I don't like the OGs but I've just never if there's one franchise that I've not been invested in, it's it's New York. For some reason, I know everyone liked it. Like, even when I try to rewatch it, I'm like, I'm not into this. I'm just not. And maybe it's because I'm, like, not into the New York life. But then I like this. So I don't know. I don't know. It's really, really weird. I just feel like people who are liking New York weren't invested in OGs. But everyone loved New York the most. So it's like, I think oh. You know what I think we need? I think we, in the end of the day, like, New York is all about, like, socializing people who know people. And I think these people think that they, they, they're something, but they really aren't. And Except Jenna. Yes. Yep, exactly. But then she's even, like, trying so hard, you know? Like, she's, like, the one that's not even fitting in. And it's just, like, that's... Well, just that's... so you know, like, people keep giving a shit about Jenna. Like, they're like, you guys don't realize how big Jenna is and what a big deal it was. And I'm like, yeah, well, I, I guess I don't. I'm not in... I don't care about fashion industry. So, like, yeah, I don't know. But apparently, like, she is a big deal. No, I know, I know, and then in production, kind of knew that, and like that's why, like even Ben, there's like they thought that she was like Lady Gaga coming in the show, but you still have to have a personality to match it. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, well, before we get into New York, let's touch on our, well, like some tea that we got actually. So, and it's involving Danielle Cabral. So Danielle's getting a lot of crap online because she has officially flipped. Like she's completely flipped. And it's like, you know, when you like, like, let's say you were to flip and you, and you kind of, you're like, let me be slow about it. She doesn't care. She's like quick about it. She's like, boom, 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 boom. Like she has flipped. And, um, Danielle is now team Melissa, team Rachel. She's still good from what I'm hearing with the other girls that she was friends with that she hung out all summer with. She's still friends with them, but she's obviously really, really flipped. And then it also just kind of makes me think about her relationship with her brother. And I just want to note this because some people are calling us out and they're saying, especially, you know, Chantel doesn't go on Twitter because she is like afraid of Twitter um, or X now that it's called X, but she is like afraid of that world because people are so savage on there. And they're like, oh, so funny to see you guys like come on Danielle now that she's no longer cool with Teresa, which is like, she is cool with Teresa. And literally again, guys go listen back. You guys don't follow us like that. If you're going to say that we are now doing it. No, we, we were blocked last season from Danielle because she didn't like what we said. So, um, we've always like had a weird feeling about Danielle. And for me, it's always like the thirstiness, like the obsession with fame, like the only obsession I feel like someone should have and this could be controversial is like with who you believe in. Like if you believe in God or your God or whatever, like that's what you should thrive for. Not like, and I think she has an unhealthy obsession with fame. And that is just scary to me to see on anybody. Cause I feel like fame is literally the devil and we cover it, but we would never be on the show. Like we, we cover it because we like think it's like, you know, a crap show and we're like, like an any escape. other viewer. Yeah. And, but we would never put ourselves in that. We would never put our family in that because we know it, it's those people are not happy. None of these people are happy in the real world. Like you guys think these people are happy. I don't think any of them are. I think every one of them are super stressed because they're always looking to catch up or look like this type of person or be the most beautiful or be the best or just, you know, keep up with the Jones. I don't have it in me. And I think most people don't have it in them to want that type of life. But anyways, Danielle is like obsessed with fame. And so I've always just had a bad feeling about her. She actually recently posted a video of her vision board, Chantel. It was so embarrassing. Oh and this God. is embarrassing have, to me. Did it have like stuff on it? Yeah. I'll, I don't know exactly what it had, but, um, I, I just like sucks. Everyone sends us these things. We don't know. We, we get this stuff sent to us, like, which you guys help us so much keep up with everything. Cause we don't know. So apparently she put a vision board. So today is the VMAs. Okay. So today's the VMAs. And so she conveniently put this up where she was like, this is on my vision board to get like a hundred thousand followers. I think we touched on this either on the Patreon or 
this or on our main platform, but she said to get a hundred thousand followers. Like she just cares about like a following she, and she like marked things up to um, host a red carpet event. Like, Oh my God, can you imagine her host a red carpet event? And then um, it was like to be at the VMAs. Like there were a couple other things that were just so like, this is what you're searching in life. Like how about to make sure your kids have like a college fund or, you know, to work your ass off. So your kids have like a great life set up for them. You know, how about things like that versus being so like, shallow. So it was like to go to the VMAs and I'm hearing, and we'll see it later that there are a couple of housewives who do go to the VMAs today and the VMAs recording is today. So, and they're from New Jersey. Taylor's going to be there. Oh, she is. Oh, we'll talk yeah. about this more, why this is so interesting, but I can't now. But I do know of some of the housewives from New Jersey that are going. And Danielle has apparently been really trying to go, like really trying to go, really trying to get in there. And I just think it's like, it's too much. It's too freaking much. Like you've had one season. Gradually, these things will happen. Stop trying to force yourself into all of it. And I do think that a lot of people who like Danielle, because Chantel, me and you both said we like Danielle on the show. I feel like we're going to watch it this season. And so many people are going to be like, you know what? It's too much. I don't like her. Like it's too much how obsessed she is with fame. And it's like, you respect people who own it, but then you're also like, it's, it's a lot. And it, it's scary. It's like, I would want to know a little bit more about her childhood. Would she always want to be an, an actress, an actor, this, that I know she says she like, you, know, you, you have to watch her on like true life and stuff. And Oh yeah. Apparently, <laughs> like she was very, Um, it was very cringe. Like it was very, she put on her IMDB and stuff. Like she's always acted like that. Someone told me, and I don't know if this is true. I I've never watched it. And Chantal, you and I should watch it. But, um, someone was like her mom and her were so much on that show. So I can imagine though, Chantal, like as a sibling, cause we're going to touch on her brother. I can imagine like as a sibling, like being like, it's too much. Like you're too freaking much enough. Yeah, I know. Especially when it's like, for at what cost? Like, at what yeah. cost are you trying to do this? And especially, listen, like, I really do understand if she really has been always wanting to become something, you know, and then now she's on, she's getting some recognition and this is her whole life passion, like that it could be very exciting, but it's like also like, relax, you're on the housewives, you're not a freaking actress and let's, let's be on the show and let's be a little humble about it. Right. So we learned, so this, so what we're touching on is Danielle's feud with her brother. So this is allegedly the reason why Danielle and her brother are feuding, why why he blocked her off Instagram, and then why he like stopped speaking to her. So um, earlier this year, Danielle did state that, you know, after watching the show, she said this on Watch What Happens Live, that people do believe, you know, she might be a psychopath sister-in-law who tortured her sister-in-law while others have their own narrative. Uh, Danielle revealed that Thomas, her brother, was not happy that he was mentioned on the show, despite Danielle thinking it would show how show him how hurt she was um, over their rift. So she thought this was going to heal. I don't know why anyone would think talking about your drama with your family member and how you're affected, and then also like minimizing it, saying that he is overreacting over Instagram. Like that's why he does not mess with me. At, like if that was if that was me and someone was saying that, I'd be like in my head, Danielle, you know that I'm not going to respond to this because I'd want nothing to do with the show. And you know, there's 700 other reasons why. And now you're portraying it on uh, TV where everyone watches all our mutual friends, family, that it has to do with social media. And she uh, knew, she knew for yeah. sure. And the mom knew for sure. And whoever knew for sure that this, that the brother would not be happy with this at all. Yeah. So it's, it's so crazy. And she did say, she admitted that her brother's, not, she's heard that her brother is absolutely not happy about her talking about the show. So what is the truth? Like, what is this guy Thomas's side? So all about TRH, we, this is again on all about TRH.com. We received an anonymous tip from someone who could prove her connection with Thomas and his wife. And they told us their side of things. So the source is accusing Danielle of allegedly being a pathological liar and saying that her brother Tommy would never move forward with her until she agreed to a mental evaluation. Uh, the 
the girl who reached out to us and wants to remain anonymous, we'll just say the anonymous source said, quote, if she, Danielle, agreed to a mental evaluation, there may be a chance her brother will talk to her again. She has to be the first to make the move and seek help. Now, I know some people are coming at us and we, it was two people, but still, and they were like, you, how are you guys going to go there and talk about like someone's mental health? We're not talking about her mental health. We're repeating what someone told us and just saying what this person who has a connection with a brother is obviously saying, and just so you know, we have a portion on all about TRH that we say we share anonymous tips. They may not be a hundred percent true. We will tell you when we know for a fact that it's a hundred percent true. All we can tell you is that we know that there is a connection with this person and her brother and the brother's wife. That's, that's what we can tell you. Um, so uh, there's a portion of all about Terry where we talk about like, Hey, we're posting this as an, a, an anonymous person revealing this, um, take what you want from it. Yeah. So, and it's not to say we're like 100% believing it either, but then, you know, sometimes when there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. I will say I've gotten, a, again, Danielle is probably the, one of the most like, uh, out of all the housewives that I've gotten so many tips blinds about, things about, and, and this isn't the first time that I'm hearing about her mental health. There's other things that I've heard that I have not put out there out of respect. I'm not going to put out there out of respect for Danielle. I've heard and gotten so many blinds about this that actually would make sense and that this would match up with it, but I'm not going to do that unless she wants to open up. If she, if there's anything or if she's ever been through something, like we're not going to put it out there. It's, you know, that's something that she needs to do it. This is an anonymous person connected saying Thomas is site. And I I think some people were like, well, he's not on the show. We shouldn't be, he shouldn't like talk. If someone wants to speak for him because they're tired of what Danielle has done, Danielle has brought it to the show guys. Exactly. If we didn't know that she had, exactly. We didn't know she had this, like, um, this weird relationship with her brother and he doesn't speak to her and he used to love the show. And now all of a sudden you're on the show. It's like just such weird things. Like, we're going to talk about it. That's a huge gonna, part of exactly. her storyline. That's her storyline. We're going to absolutely talk about it. And if we hear the other side, we're not going to, you, you guys can't come at us and say, and there again, I keep, I, I, we need to, I need to stop saying you guys, we need to put that on our merch, by the way, our merch is coming. So, um, we just wanted to make sure we ordered it to make sure the quality and everything is great beforehand. Um, but we're going to talk about it. We're not going to like, you know, not touch on it. Like she's made it a storyline. So we're going to hear all sides and it is what it is. So those two people that get upset about it, I get it. Cause if you like Danielle, I get it. I like Teresa, right? I get it. So that's fine. We're just going to have to agree to disagree here. And that's all that it is. So here's what the anonymous tip said. So they said, Danielle loves to get everything for free. She thinks cause she's posting on her Instagram story that she should be paid, which we all know that's true. And you know, I know, listen, I love to get things for free. However, I am not on the real housewives portraying to be like, when you think real housewives, like you think wealthy, you think I aspire, like I love living through these people because like, I'm not there in my life. So for her to, obviously she's not wealthy. Like, obviously like she needs money and that's fine, but you're on the wrong show. So the anonymous tip added when she was younger, she would latch on to anyone who was working in the entertainment world. She's um, pathetic and pathological. If she agrees to a mental evaluation, there may be a chance her brother will talk to her again, but she needs to be able to make um, the move and seek help. And then the person connected to Thomas said that her brother hates attention. So does his wife. And, and I know that because I did reach out to his wife because I was like, you know, I do want to like just hear your side just because we're only hearing her side. And I know that her bro- the brother's wife wants absolutely nothing to do with it. Like she really doesn't. So I just think this is someone who's like had enough and is speaking and the brother and the brother's wife does not know that, you know, who the person is and that they're doing this. And then she's like, it's honestly not worth it to them. They try to help her. She only reacted more insane. And Nate is a better. He's a sweet guy, but it takes a special <laughs> type of dude to be with that one. And then they said, if Tommy won't speak to his own mother, Danielle doesn't stand much of a shot. If I ever see Tommy on TV, I would be shocked to death. Now, Tommy not speaking to his mother, I do think that's weird. Yeah, because like it's like, are you mad that your mom is allowing her? Like, what are you you can't control both of them? What are you mad about? And that's your mom. 
I know. It's like life is too short for that. Um, yeah. I do. What I will say is like, okay, maybe not this season. I do think, especially if Danielle keeps up with these shenanigans, there will be one point where the brother is finally going to be like, I need to see my side. Especially if she mentions his name again and keeps saying things and he's seeing this delusional girl up there. I don't think so. Or maybe, maybe the girl will, or maybe they'll just pretend that they're blind with other things, you know, but I really do think that that I don't will happen. Think, I really don't. don't. Like, I absolutely don't think that. I think they're so low key. And I think that's why they're so upset about this. And it's like, we all have like family drama. And if I know my brother is so low key and so is his wife, why? But again, Danielle is so desperate to be on the show that, you know, producers, they I, we tell you guys all the time, they pressure you storyline, storyline. What's your storyline? What's next? You need to do more. So like she obviously got pressured, but like, I don't, I mean, she didn't obviously get pressured, but that could have been something. And in return, she threw her brother under the bus. And that's also probably why he's like, I made the right decision. Um, so, you know, we did ask them, we're like, what is the reason? Like, what is the actual reason that Danielle and the brother aren't speaking? And she said that she wanted to brand his wedding on Instagram and he and his wife said, no, she just, the wife had just lost her grandmother and it was an extra tough time for them. And Danielle would not let up. And she's like, that's just the straw that broke the camel's back. There were other factors. A lot of us don't even know about. I mean, if someone even tried, if a sister-in-law even tried to like really put her two cents into my wedding, that would already just bother me in itself. Oh my gosh. If a sister, oh my gosh, that would literally piss me the hell off. Like, I'm sorry. That's a no. Like, when yeah, you unless I'm married, asking you that. for your, unless I'm asking you for your help, like, Hey, want to come in? Like, help me do this. And then like, then you can offer some advice or you can just offer your services, but you don't need to even give me your opinion really if I'm not asking you for it. Well, so us in our world, like as a Chaldean, like the husband's family always pays for the wedding. But like we talked about in our last episode, you get it back based off envelopes, which I know is like crazy, but you do get it back. So half the time the wedding is pretty much paid for or whatnot. So maybe she, maybe it's like that with Italians too. And one of you guys can correct me because we have so many amazing Italian listeners, but maybe the, the husband's I do, family. I do think it is, it is like that for Italians. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the husband's family is paying. So Danielle's like, well, if my parents are paying, then I have input. And it's like, okay, but are you paying ma'am? So sit back and they're going to get yeah. the money back with the envelope. So are they actually paying? Like, no, like you be quiet, you know? So I, that would completely upset me. I just, th there's like a boundary with that stuff. Like this is my wedding. Um, you can be involved in things and come to things, but I don't want your opinion. Like I just don't. And like, what does that mean to like put it on Instagram? Like who did Danielle even have to like know to put it on Instagram? I don't know. I've had people who followed her before the show, before she even got cast, like season 12, like season before she even knew that she would ever have a chance. And people said she was like so extra trying to be an influencer on social media. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. And this isn't the first fallout Danielle has had with a family member. Danielle unfollowed Caroline Manzo, who was her step aunt, who apparently that she grew up with. She literally grew up with Danielle seeing her like on holidays, all that stuff. And she unfollowed her after she was cast on New Jersey on The Real Housewives. So Caroline Manzo is her step aunt. Yeah, it's like a whole thing about like how to explain it. Like she she was married to. I don't even want to explain it. I, Chanel, how do you not know this first? Off? No, I I don't. I for some reason I did not know that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that was her step aunt, and um, yeah, she grew up with her, and Danielle unfollowed her, and it was like a whole thing, and yeah, so. That's that's the topic number one. I think that Danielle is completely in the wrong with this entire thing, and I feel for the brother and the wife. Like usually, I'm like, you know, because I, I think about like, oh well, Teresa was the sister, and then Melissa was the whatever. But this is obviously like such a different situation, such a different fam family dynamic, all that stuff. So. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. As you know, I am wedding planning and getting married and when big life changes happen for me, it always makes me feel a little uneasy and not knowing the unknown is really hard for me. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. I am in therapy now to help with these big changes that are happening, and I've been telling you guys about my panic attacks I've been having, and just learning new tools just to have in the toolbox has been really helpful. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. 
Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash TRH today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash T-R-H. Our next partner is AG1, the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I drink it literally every day. As a working mom, life is hectic and always moving fast. I find myself cooking for the kids and forgetting about me, but I need something quick. Not only that, but I was tired of taking so many supplements and wanted to find a single solution. You guys have heard me say that I want to focus on more of a healthy lifestyle and I wanted better gut health, a boost in energy because I clearly need it. So I found a supplement that actually tastes great. I drink AG1 to kickstart my day and it makes me feel ready to go. Since I've been drinking AG1, I've noticed having daily energy, not noticing much cravings, better skin, and good gut health. Why take a bunch of different things when you can just mix one scoop of powder in water once a day? AG1 was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having to complicate routine. Every scoop is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and whole food source ingredients of high quality that gives me major benefits like gut and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking skin, hair, and nails. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash TRH. That's drinkag1.com slash TRH. Check it out. So when when, it's funny because when Teresa, I mean, it's not like she, I think they were kind of like, you know, not at the greatest terms of their life. But when Teresa came on the show, she didn't talk about her siblings. And like the first thing, and the first thing Danielle does is talk about her brother and like the, the, like, like, you know, my brother doesn't talk to me. And it's just like, you know, it's like, okay. and, And Danielle watched the show, obsessed over the show, hired someone to get her on the show, which house her brother, her brother, she said that on the reunion. I don't know if you remember this. Her brother loved the show. Oh my gosh, I didn't. Yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah, she said her brother has loved watching the show. Yeah, so like they, they would watch the show it. together. So you studied or it. You saw yeah. like how big, and and she's so obsessed with fame. So she saw how big, like it made Melissa famous and Joe and Teresa. And I mean, the show didn't make this didn't make Teresa famous, but it made Melissa relevant. And so she was like, "How can I be relevant?" Because she cares so much about that. So yeah, so she has been working on her bougie. Is it bougie? Bougie. Wow. Yeah, bougie, bougie kids. Bougie kids line. And I guess she like hosted a fashion show or something or and the New York fashion show. I don't know what it was because I couldn't find any press on it. So uh, <laughs> she was in New York fashion week. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, think, <laughs> I think there are things like anyone can do. I don't know. I don't know what this is. But you, Chantal, have you ever looked up bougie kids? Um, No. Oh my god! Because wow. because I've seen enough already on TV, and I would never dress my kids in that. Never, not to like. I'm sorry. It's just so not my style. It's just not, yeah, it's not our style. Form. Oh my gosh! So it yeah, seems it, like it circled like 2011 it, Jersey it's Shore. When, it's when like, Teresa leopard. had her kids. Like it's literally when yes. Teresa had her kids. Yeah, yep. that's what it is. That's when it was like in, and even then, to me, it was not in. But that was it's when like it was acceptable. It's like and like leopards, and it's like what what. It's just it's screaming and it's like not cute tutus like it's not even any of that stuff but anyway so she had her first fashion show uh and you know obviously again she's become extremely close to melissa and bravo lover one two three four since filming started in early august so sources close to production tells us that things are fine with danielle and the other girls and it says danielle quote danielle gets along with everyone with the exception of jen fessler she, you can go on our Patreon. We talk about that. So she is getting closer with uh, Melissa and Bravo Lover One Two Three Four. She's still good friends with Teresa and Jennifer Eden. And while Danielle is good with everyone, people began asking why was Melissa the only housewife to support her during New York her her show? Let's just say her show because I didn't find any press on this. So I don't know what this is, but um, just her show. So Melissa had put on Instagram. Finishing off watching New York Fashion Week, watching Danielle. I think this is just a show in New York, and they're calling it Fashion Week. Well, and- because because New York Fashion Week is this week, um, or was last week. So it's like it, it's just like this past, like I think it's like a week and a half of New York Fashion Week. And so because it's that, and she did a show during it, they're calling they're probably calling it that. 
it's just like weird too. It's not like Danielle makes these designs. I don't know, but I guess like that's that's how Fashion Week is. I'm not, I'm terrible with it. Guys, no, mostly so most you mostly like even with you know any of their fashion shows, even Kim D's and Melissa's. It's like like you don't have that during New York Fashion Week if you're a boutique. Right, exactly. So you're not the designer of the of the like yeah, you know it's so awkward. weird. Cringe. So she Melissa wrote finishing off watching Danielle do her thing with Bougie Kids Inc. Love to see it. Congrats. Okay, and everyone's like, wait, why is like Melissa the only person there? So our inside source reveals Danielle only got X amount of tickets for free, even though it was her show. She said she only had two tickets left in which she chose Melissa Gorga to come as Melissa has her own boutique. That was her excuse. And then Melissa brought her cousin along with her. Rachel Fuda was allegedly invited, but she couldn't come. Danielle could have bought tickets, invited the rest of the girls, but Danielle didn't want to spend the money again. Why are you on the show? Oh my god. Why are you sometimes you have to just take one for the team and say, This is my show. Let me get people included. It's probably gonna be, you know, very controversial that I'm only telling Bravo Lover One, Two, Three, Four, and Melissa. Like it probably is. Just because I was I never hung out with them all summer when cameras weren't filming and this is coming off. It's giving very fake, right? She's but, gonna be she's gonna be that person, like you know, for BravoCon, how you you don't they don't like pay they only pay for like one person, which is your husband, and like her mom probably wants to come, she's probably gonna tell her mom you to pay for it yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, I would probably be that. I would probably be like to my family, like, you have to buy their tickets. Like, can you guys just buy your own? Because I'd be more comfortable asking them if I'm that pathetic that I won't pay for everyone. <laughs> it's nothing no. I would do that. But if I'm being, that I would pay. Pathetic, like, if you're asking right. someone, if they want to, like, you pay for them. A hundred percent. So I heard that the girls, like, she did ask the other girls advice about it. But she didn't actually invite them. So it's like super, super weird, you know? Um, and uh, so the ladies are obviously currently filming season 14 with us, again, being the first to report. We are the first to report this. So the next group event, Chantal, what do you think the next group event is? Well, is it the VMAs, like you said? No, that's not a group event. And Bravo's not going to that. Hmm. They can't like afford it. It's too expensive for them to go to that. It's a whole different <laughs> network and all that stuff. So, no, um, it's not that. Remember last year, Melissa and Teresa went and they didn't. They didn't film it. We were like, why would oh, they not yeah. film it? Well, anyways, I'll just tell you. So, uh, so the next group event is on Saturday, and our sources tell us, quote, because the cast is still very divided, there will always be one or two housewives who don't show up at a group event. Um, we're hoping everyone gets in a room together to eventually find a solution at the end of all this where everyone can be in the same room. The next event will be Melissa and Joe Gorga's housewarming party on Saturday. Everyone was invited with the exception of Teresa, which is a shocker to no one. No one. They've been at the house for over a year. The fact that she's now doing the housewarming party. But you know what? I don't blame her because it's like you you do – you are, like, told you need to, like, have events. So, I mean, it is one where it's, like, an easy thing where it's, like, let's do this as an event, you know? Like, this will be perfect. Um, and, like, like, sometimes it does take a long time to, like, furnish your house. And, like, you know, yeah. they clearly did a bunch of changes. And, yeah, now it's, like, ready to go. And it's so funny because let's not forget last season, Teresa hosted a housewarming party and Joe refused to attend it. Like I uh, know the worst type of people. They really, truly are. So lots of New Jersey tea, but yeah, that's, that's kind of what we had and we needed to touch on it because everyone was asking about it. Um, and then on our Patreon again, we did talk about the spoilers of the feuds and all that stuff. So you guys can go to Patreon um, to listen to that. Anything else, Chantal? No. New Jersey, I know we're going to talk New York. No, 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 no. No? Okay, cool. So let's talk New York. Okay. So I don't agree with Sai and the whole food issues, but my ideal vacation is kind of how she vacations. Like food, pool, food, beach, drinks, food, and that's like my perfect vacation. We know. You're boring ass. Yeah, literally. I love that. Anytime I'd go on vacation with my mom, she would take us on like a six-hour excursion. And I do like excursions, but they were like always like history lessons. And as a kid, I just didn't appreciate it. Because it was the most tiring thing ever. And I am just someone who likes to like lay out and have um, a margarita or something. Like, that wasn't it? Good to me. Wasn't it um, awkward when they were in the car and I was like, it smells like weed? And then they're like, is there a skunk here? It was just the weirdest thing. Like, what if it was the driver? 
I know. Like it was, I mean, it was obviously the driver at that, you know, and it's like, he, I'm sure he was like sweating bullets. Like, oh my gosh, dude. I, I know. It's so awkward. Yeah. yeah, that was. Uh, but Chanel, the trip made me so excited for Mexico. Like I just keep thinking about your wedding. I know. I'm super excited too. Yeah. I am loving Uba this episode. So they're having dinner. Jessel brings up wife swap, which like Jessel starts this whole thing. She's trying to bring shade and bring up the situation with Bryn and the inappropriate comments to Aaron's husband. And Bryn wants nothing to do with the topic because Bryn was obviously so wrong. So she's uncomfortable. And Uba's like asking Sai if she would be upset if Bryn did that to her husband. And she's like, I don't care. And it's like any married woman would be upset if Bryn said that. Because sometimes there's like some truth to it or like you, you're just so flirtatious that you don't just have respect for me and uba says it would not fly if she was a married woman and i agree like i would not be okay with that i don't believe any of them saying it i don't care what they say even if it is bryn not bryn i think that's the only thing they're holding on it's like it's just bryn it's just bryn okay it doesn't matter and look what bryn's tagline is like exactly it's just bryn you know and her tagline is like, make me mad and I'll sleep with your dad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, obviously they don't pick their taglines, but still like, I, I mean, if I really didn't want that, I'd be like, I'm not okay with that. You know, I'm just, I'm not. And to me, to me, like the one thing that pissed me off the most with the conversation was that how they, and the Jessel inserted herself was like, he was laughing, like, shut up. We get it. Like, and if I was, if I was Aaron, I would have been like, I was mad at my husband for laughing. And he, maybe he was laughing because he felt uncomfortable and he felt awkward at the time. Oh yeah. I talk about the laughing thing. Um, because that would just make me, that would send me. Well, Brynn apologizes for saying Aaron's party was boring, but then she says she did it because she was hurt. And Aaron was accusing her of something really disgusting that wasn't true. And I just don't like how this is getting flipped on Aaron. What was disgusting to me was what Brynn said. What was disgusting is Brynn pointing out that Aaron's husband laughed to taunt her even more. Like, that's going to piss anyone off. Like, I'm too crazy for the show, you guys. If anyone spoke to my husband that way, it's unforgivable. That person would not be in my life because you have no respect for my marriage. And my marriage is the most important thing in my life. So, like, I would be very, very upset about that. Exactly. And Aaron, I would never and I would never apologize if I was Aaron. Never, never. Aaron is shook that Brent isn't apologizing for the inappropriate comments, and she ends up uh kind of half ass apologizing. And Jessel brings up the Abe laughing thing again. And again, this would send me like they keep bringing it up. And it would also make me call my husband and get mad at the situation again and then just get flustered with him, which is like you're creating problems now. I don't know. I would just get like the fact that they kept bringing that up, I would literally go back to my husband and be like, you dumbass, like, look at now. Like I would just get, I, it, it would make me so mad because now to them, they know what they're doing when they say that they like literally know what they're doing. And you're just going to get mad at your husband. Cause it's like, look, you laugh and, and I'm upset. And now look how they're using it against me. And she did say that to her own husband and he agreed it wasn't right. So it's like, yeah. You know, it's just, I, it really pissed me off. I can't wait for the re reunion just for this me part. Me too, me too. And I hope Jess will eat her words because she's even pissing me off even more. Because not like it's not like you were accused of anything at this, mo at this moment. Right. And yeah. you're like, you're like condoning it. You're saying like, oh, he was la like, no, shut up. You could tell Jessel would get so mad. Like, she doesn't even like her husband and she would just get so livid at the situation. So I can just see her freaking out. But she Jessel would think that he's cheating. She's like, we're yeah, divorcing. She would right. find any way to be like, yeah, we're divorced. Right. Bryn had me really confused when she tried to turn it on Aaron and claim that she should have gotten an, an apology. And I was like, this is like not okay that you're even saying that. Yeah. I think what she really just wanted to hear was like, I don't think you would sleep with my husband. Yeah. I'm so over Sai in this food thing. It's actually, it's so annoying. They're all having a serious conversation. And then Sai calls the waiter to come over because she's, quote, over it. And we're all over you, Sai, and your eating habits. And she probably barely touches her food. So just stop. Like, I couldn't, I could never hang out with a Sai. It would just annoy me so much that she acts like it's the end of the world and has these, like, serious food issues. It's it's so weird. You just like look at that person and be like you're annoying. Yeah, like you you I who wants to hang out with someone like that? Like calm down, you're over it, but it didn't happen to you. So don't tell me when I'm over some like when you're over something that has nothing to do with you. Good, be over it. Shut up. Erin is um one thing I'll say about Erin is like she's too, like she reminds me of someone we have in our family too. She's just too much where sometimes she's just like is so serious about everything that like right, you I don't have exactly, yeah. 
you don't have to call it out. Like sometimes you just don't, but yeah. I get it because she just gets mad. Like she called out the side thing. She called out this. She, like, and there's more in this episode too that you she just like to confront every situation. Yes, and it's too much sometimes. Like I'm all about confronting, but I I do think hers is a little bit too much. Yeah, we're yeah, and I I could totally see that because she was like, and she even after she's like, can we just like have this conversation? Like no one's letting me speak. But the one thing I can respect about her, oh my gosh, yeah. Now that you said that, she totally reminds me of this person. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> because this person also does this. Our cousin does this. Where like when when you apologize to her, like she can just move on, mm-hmm. and that's how Aaron is. Like Aaron's like, okay, you apologize, great, let's move on. Um. I also hate Bryn's confessional look because she's like me. She doesn't have good posture where she slouches and her chest doesn't come off flattering. The pink dress. Did you notice that? Oh, I thought she looked really good in that. But if you look at like her like chest area, it's not flattering at all. And mm. also Sai is like this fashionista. What Sai is wearing in her confessional look is by far the ugliest top I've ever seen in my life. It's like the jean jacket top. And I don't care if it's $5,000. I don't care what it is. It's not a good – it's like you're this fashionista and that's what you wore for your confessional look. Because denim was is in, was in, but yeah. Chantel, I mean, even <laughs> I am all for denim and I have a lot of denim. I bought a lot of denim this summer because you're right. It isn't. That denim that she wore was not cute. To me, I At feel all. like Jenna and Aaron have the best style out of everyone. And um, except Aaron, sometimes a little questionable with like some of her, like she's too plain sometimes, but she knows what her looks like. She's like simple Together. and classic. Yeah. yeah. I am confused about the Jenna stuff. So they want her to open up more, but then we literally see a flashback scene of her talking and all of them getting mad because it was someone else's moment. But they literally just said, like, it, it didn't make sense to me. Brynn was like, if I'm talking about my life, like, I want you to open up about yours. And then they show us a flashback of that happening. And it was actually, like, it was kind of weird for Jenna to do. And there were, because everyone was like, it's not about you. I mean, all of their reaction was scary, though. No, like, no, that was, under- that was a fake thing. Like, that was like, what if that happened? Oh my gosh, it was. Yeah, because they're like, she, they are all clowning on her. Like, you just told us the most, like, you know, like, um, crazy story in the world, and all of a sudden, Jenna's gonna be like, "Hey, my name is Judith." So then they, so then, they, so then production did that flashback, and like to show, like, what if she did do that? And I was like, what? <laughs> Wait, that is hilarious. I didn't catch that. So. Yeah, it was like it was like they did like, like they did that noise to make it seem like if they went back in time and like she, I was like, like the changed. girls are so vile, but like these girls are like that where they were like, It's not your moment, shut up. And I'm like, Oh my god. <laughs> no, they were saying like if she did do that, like and like they were and all that is how it would go. Yeah, and like they're all saying, like, okay, no, they all agreed with like um Jenna, like Brynn, that was not a good time for her to even say no, it was not a time for anyone to say anything. Yeah, you know, when it was your moment. Like we were giving you the space for it to be your moment. Bryn's bored, dude. Bryn's bored. She's, she's so like, bored with everyone yeah, and with life. Exactly. Yeah, literally, that's exactly what it is. Also, Jenna's childhood made me really sad just because, like, I don't know if it's because I'm a mom. Like, I just couldn't imagine where, you know, where she was saying that her mom didn't like noise. So they weren't able to, like, speak and, like, it, they had to be very quiet. I'm just like, what? Imagine going into that. Like, I want my kids' childhood to be so magical and I make sure of it. And if they have to be loud, then they're loud. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I know it's just sad because like you just don't know what people are born with and like you know her mom had a you know had a mental illness that you know her kids didn't even know yeah Jessel's history of her life it had me all over the place and I can't (laughs) and then and then Jessel says she got offended by Aaron's comment about being catered to or whatever it is and again, Jessel's just not someone I could be friends with either. Like, I just, she's I would just, not be able to. She's so lost. I feel like I was dying, like, when she was explaining things. And I, and I even wrote down, like, that is just someone I would not connect to in, in person. Never. Or have, I yeah, can or have never. I can never connect to her. I think she's too much. And I'm Wait. too much. And I, I can't connect to her. Another thing with Erin, like, even um, even when, you know, Jenna was saying her story and she's about to cry, like, she does have too much high, like, she has way too much, like, high emotional intelligence where she's, like, reading the room. She's like, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you sure, Jenna? Yeah, are you sure? And it's like, her, yeah. but it's like, sometimes it's like, okay, you know, when you ask people that, they're going to want to cry. So it's like, just like, you see her, she's upset. Just, like, give her, like, a wink and stop talking. Stop well, talking. Erin is like, Erin doesn't have emotion. Like, I, yes, see yeah. her cry. <laughs> But I don't see her. I don't feel her cry. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, she has no emotion. She's very, like, straight face. Like, like she, when she looks at you, she's, like, looking down your soul. And it scares me. Yeah, that's really true. 
And that's literally how our cousin is. Um, <laughs> and our cousin listens to this. So I'm so scared. Uh, but anyways, our cousin would never even think it's about her. So I don't know. Yeah, she um, would. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. I mean, she is self-aware. So anyways, um, okay. So WAP and Aaron not knowing what that meant. I thought that was funny because she is the youngest and she didn't even know. The fact that, that she seems so much older than her age really scares me. She totally does. Oh, my God. Like, I, I'm i sorry to say this. She totally does. It's, it's just Yeah. Like, like she, she looks older than her age. She acts older than her age. Like, I was like, she whoa. She absolutely like, does look and act older. Wow. You're so right. She literally, to me, was like 45. It, yeah. I swear to God, she does look like that. Like, I was shocked that she was the youngest one. Same. I was shocked that she was younger than Bryn, too, especially. Even even Jessel, to me, like, looks younger. Um, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's But crazy. Jessel also acts, like, older than she probably is, too. But I don't know. She still looks younger to me. I don't know. Um, I'm still shook with the cast, this whole new cast, getting the beautiful home and trip and how New Jersey gets the worst vacations <laughs> ever. Since. Like, when they were having brunch, like, I'm just like, I can't believe this new cast got that. Me too. I was shocked. Uh, it is. It does make me sad that Jenna wears like these oversized clothes with the ladies. It really does. I know because she is beautiful and like you. You probably have a great broad, so it's like just own it. Yeah. Sai's childhood is really heartbreaking, and hearing that her mom died at—I mean, well, her mom had a heart attack at a park by herself. You know, obviously, dying is part of life, and it's super sad when you really start thinking about it. But to like die alone, or like the last moments you were alone, that'd be so hard for me to know. But Sai seems like she really tried hard with her mom. But if someone doesn't want to be helped, like there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and to me, it really did break my heart. That was like so sad. But she really took it, and like she spun it in, in such a positive light. Like she, she constantly says like. I don't want anyone to talk bad about my mom. I want it to make it look like she wasn't a good mom. And it's like, she just wants her, that, that legacy to live on for her. If, even if it is true or not true, she just wants that. Yeah, absolutely. Which is so honorable to me. Cause like, it's like, she did have a disease and she probably did try, but it just took over. Absolutely. By the way, and then, wait, oh, did ahead. you make a comment about Jessel? Because no. Jessel's like, I hope I hope she's in a Chanel bag and not a Walmart bag. I'm like, oh, oh my God, Jessel, shut up. She said Walmart or Target, which honestly, yeah. I love both Walmart or Target, you guys. I'm not kidding. Walmart and Target have the best holiday decor ever, 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 ever. So don't ever go to those expensive places like I did in the beginning of my marriage and spent a freaking shit ton at those places that charge an arm and a leg for holiday decor. Walmart and Target has the best. Walmart, even better than Target for Halloween and Christmas. I can't wait. Because I need yeah. to go for Halloween. Sorry, I just had to say that. But uh, I really love Uba. I feel like every friend group needs an Uba. And the way Uba reacted, by the way, Chantal, to her food uh, or her hair or someone's hair on the food, that's literally my husband where they're like gagging. Oh, wow. Yeah, but that's so dramatic. <laughs> that's literally my husband. The way he acts, like... Like, he would be like, I'm never, like, like let's say, like, he was at my mom's house and there was, like, hair on the food. Like, he would literally, like, commit to, like, he would die right there. um Because that's, like, the, he's so dramatic about hair. Like, he gets so scared about it. um Okay, so the embryo story was weird. But should Aaron have told her she didn't believe it? It's not that serious for Aaron to have done that. Absolutely not. I was so, it was so obnoxious to say someone is lying about that. And Wait, who it the really hell cares? Was, no, I was uncomfortable by it. And typically, like, I like Aaron, but obviously, like, she might have had a couple drinks. But, like, that is something you in your head roll your eyes and you're like, okay, like, I don't really believe that because I know people in that situation. But you never actually look at that person and say, you're lying about the embryo story. Like, that yeah. never happened. And like this is the thing with Erin. She like you said, she likes to get she likes to confront people. She's not gonna go out and tell, you know, Uba or Jenna, like, oh, I didn't believe that story. And then they go and tell her. She wants to be the one to say it herself. But it's like it was like keep that to yourself though. It's not yeah, exactly with anyone. Exactly. Like, who cares? Like, how many doctors have you been to that they did that? Like, just because you hear stories about it, like who cares? Right. You have if she's embellishing it and It's like, even if they don't say it the first appointment or the first two hours, they say it the second or third. So, like, her story is not crazy to hear. It, regardless, why are you looking at her <laughs> and telling her that she's lying about that? It was I so know. weird. Also, when Bryn was in Sai's bathroom, Chanel, was it not wild to see how much taller she is than Sai? I know. Oh, my God. I was like, gosh. Bryn, you're a giant. I literally thought she was a giant. Same. And when Bryn went into Aaron's room and broke down, I cried, Chantel. Oh, wow. Because I think I see 
I can tell, like just Bryn's character, everything, that she wants a family so badly and she doesn't know if she'll get it. And it scares her and it makes me so sad that people who really want this family, want children, who want kids, like have to feel this way because I could just tell Bryn is very sensitive and it broke my heart seeing her like that. I just love that Bryn was like, let me go into this room and tell her, like, I'm not coming to dinner, dinner, but it's not because of you. Like she, like that she alleviated, alleviated probably so much stress for herself and for Aaron. And a conversation where Aaron's like, was it because of me or, you know, all that stuff. Like she went straight to it, but she was so vulnerable, which like, you can just tell, like you can tell she'll be the most incredible mom in this world. And she just wants to know that she'll have that. And she's worried that she might not have that. And that is just so sad to me. I really hope we do get to see it and we we get to see it like through yeah. like the seasons of her I getting agree. it. I don't know. I'm loving New York. I just I just am. I mean, the girls like we talk about them and although like some are annoying and some are like we wouldn't be friends with, like I think it's a great cast. I think um next season they can re- remove two people and add two new people and then it will be a great cast. Really? I honestly am good with this whole cast. I really am. Wow. Yeah, so I think I'm good. I I mean, I think Jessel's an annoying person, but I want to see what happens with her marriage. I think, (laughs) like, no, no, maybe they'll work on it, but I just, I think it all works, and I think that they're also getting a lot of feedback that's probably scaring the crap out of them, that they're, like, they're going to be so different. I, I can see these people changing season two, like, Bravo Lover 1234 from New Jersey, she got probably the worst feedback any, like, new housewife could get. And I don't see her changing for the second season. I do see the girls, like, saying we need to be a little bit more self-aware here. Um. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, good episode. Some of you guys don't even watch New York, and you guys will listen to this. So, we appreciate you. Watch it. I know. You should, though. Yeah. Just watch it. I get it, though. I really get why people aren't watching it. You know? It, they're... I mean, it's a new show. It's a new franchise. Like, if you love Bravo and there's nothing else to do, watch it. Yeah. I don't know. Um, But, yeah, I think that's all. So, this week we will – oh, we have Salt Lake City. We have Orange County. I'm sure we have a lot Uh, of – Married to Medicine is coming on soon. So, we need to to make sure we – we're doing Married to Medicine. Okay. I'm total – I love Married to Medicine. Are you kidding me? And Deidre's in Married to Medicine now. Are you kidding? Like, Deidre is life. I am so freaking excited. So, yeah, I'm totally down for that. There was another thing that I was going to say, but my mind. Is she married to a doctor? She's dating a doctor. Oh, my God. Wow. I kind of want to just see Apollo, though. (laughs) Sorry. Not sorry. Oh, we were mentioned on the reunion for Atlanta again. Shout out to allabouttrh.com. So it's super exciting. Um, and you, Chantal, please watch the reunion because I want to talk about it. I really want to talk about it, and I think you'll, like, die at it all. Okay, maybe I will, or maybe we can bring someone that, like, watches it so you can talk about it with them. Oh, yeah, that could be a good idea, too. Well, work is about to get started for both of us, so thank you guys so much for being supportive and listening. If you guys can, leave us a review on um, Apple Podcasts. Just go all the way down. It's going to say write a review. You just go to our episodes, and then you scroll down, write a review. Let us know your thoughts, only if they're good. If they're not, just don't listen to us anymore. (laughs) Um, And also join us on Patreon. We talk spoilers on Patreon. We have like a really great intimate community there. And make sure you're checking out all about trh.com. But thank you guys so much for listening. Bye, guys. Have a good week.